Question nine is a straight line graph question. I know it's a straight line graph because I'm looking at the equation they've given me there. There are no powers in it. It's y equals 2x minus 3. It's in the form of y equals mx plus or minus c. Okay, I know it's a straight line. There are no powers. On the grid, draw the graph of y equals 2x minus 3 for values of x from negative 2 to 2. And they've been generous here and given you all of this empty space which should prompt you to put a table of values in. They might not give you so much empty space, and also on a GCSE, they might not give you the axes. So they've been super kind to us here. I'm going to put my table of values in. So here I'm going to have my values for x, and here I'm going to have my values for y. And they want x from negative 2 to positive 2, so minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, Two. So they're the values they want. So now let's substitute the values for x in to find what y is. So 2x, which is 2 times x. So 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Take away another 3 is negative 7. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Take off another 3 is negative 5. 0 times 2 is 0 take off 3 is negative 3, 2 times 1 is 2, take away 3 is minus 1, 2 times 2 is 4, take away 3 is positive 1. There's my table of values. That is worth one mark for at least two correct attempts. And that's it. So you get one mark for showing your table. Now we need to plot our points. So the first coordinate point is along the x-axis, negative 2, down the y-axis, 7. So negative 2, negative 7. Then I've got negative 1, negative 5. So negative 1, negative 5. 0, negative 3. 1, negative 1. And 2, positive 1. So there's all my x's. Do not forget to join them to make a straight line. And you can just extend it off the graph. That's fine. So there's my line plotted. Now I got one mark for my table of values up above. I get a second mark for following through whatever values I've decided on up here, however wrong they are. I get the second mark for following those through and plotting them in the right place. I then get an answer mark if I've done the exact correct line, go in between the values of negative 2 and positive 2. Question 10 is an area question, and it's find the shaded area. However, it's worded slightly differently. So Janice cuts a triangle from a rectangular piece of metal. She uses the rest of the metal to make a name badge, the shaded area. The rectangle has a length of 6 and a width of 3. The right angle triangle has a base of 2 and a height of 3. Work out the area of the name badge, so that's the shaded area. So first thing I'm going to find is the area of the full rectangle, which is base times height, so it's 6 times 3 equals 18 centimetres squared. So that's the whole rectangle. Now I need to find the area of the triangle bit that she cuts away. Area of a triangle is half of base times height, so that's going to be half of 2 times 3. So that's going to be half of 6 which is 3 centimeters squared so now I've stated the area of my rectangle and the area of my triangle I can find the area of the badge which is whatever my value was for the rectangle 18 take away whatever my value was for the triangle which is 3 and that's going to leave me with 15 centimeters squared and this is a four mark question which I think is really generous for a higher paper. You get um, one mark for getting one of the areas right. So you get one mark for finding either that or that. You get a second mark for showing your answers take away from each other. You get the third mark for getting the 15. And look at the answer line. 
they haven't given you the centimetre squared. So that means there is an extra mark for putting centimetres squared on the answer line. So I added it in there because I always put it in when I'm calculating so I don't lose my place. So I would have got that mark, but many people will not have. Question 11 is about depreciation or percentage decrease. Um, it's a non-calculator paper, so if you're thinking, oh, depreciation, I can use my compound interest formula, you can't here, all right, because it's a non-calculator paper and the numbers are fairly simple and the depreciation rate changes. So let's have a look at the question. Danny bought a car for £10,000. The value of the car depreciated, so that means it lost value, by 20% in the first year. Then, the value of the car depreciated by 10% in the second year. Work out the value of Danny's car at the end of the two years. Alright, so we've got two things to deal with here. We want to find out the value at end of year one. And then we want to find the value at the end of year two. So let's find the end of year one first. The car started off as £10,000. It depreciated by 20%. So 10% of £10,000 would be £1,000. So 20% would be double that, which would be £2,000. Now, at this point, I can take my original 10,000, subtract the 20% that it lost, and that would leave me with the car being valued at £8,000 at the end of the first year. So, let's look at the second year. It's starting its value this year at £8,000, and it loses... 10% this year. So I need to find 10%, which is going to be £800. And then I need to do my 8000 take away the £800 it loses, and that leaves me with £7,200. So that's the value of the car. The question wanted me to work out the value of Danny's car. Brilliant. So I'm done. Now be careful here, the question could very well have asked you how much money did Danny lose in the two years, in which case the answer wouldn't be 7,200, but it would be 10,000 take away the 7,200. So be very careful that you are answering the question given. Now this is a three marker. In order to get the marks for this, you get one mark, um, for getting the £8,000 correct, you get one mark for then whatever your answer was there, if you correctly found what 10% off that was, and then you get your third mark for actually getting the right answer. Question 12, expanding double brackets, everyone's favourite. So I'm going to put my loops in. I'm going to do x times x, which is x squared. Then x times negative 8, which is negative 8x. Then 5 times x, which is positive 5x. Then 5 times negative 8, which is negative 40. What I'm going to do then is collect and simplify. Negative 8x, add on 5x's, is going to leave me with negative 3x. Haven't done anything to that x squared. Haven't done anything to that negative 40. So my answer is x squared minus 3x minus 40. With regards to marks, you get an answer mark if you've got it completely right. If you haven't got it right, you've messed up somewhere, you get one mark up here for three terms correct out of the four. So if you've got an x squared, an 8x, a 5x, or a 40, any three of those, you'd get one mark. You can ignore the signs. So if you had... If you, if you missed, for example, that that would end up being negative 40, if you had plus 40, you would still get one method mark, but you would not get your answer mark. 
Okay, so they're quite generous if you got the actual terms correct. 12b, they want you to factorise x squared minus 16. Now, we did some factorising earlier on in the paper. At the front of the paper, if they're asking you to factorise, it's going to go into a single bracket and um, it's not going to be massively complicated. Here, we're on question 12. We're towards the back of the paper. Just because it's got two terms doesn't mean it's going to go into one bracket. You need to look carefully at what they've given you. Your clue that it doesn't go into one bracket should be the fact that they don't share any terms. There's nothing common about x squared and 16. But what this is, what you should recognise, is that x squared is a square number. You should also recognise that 16 is a square number and they are being subtracted so you're finding the difference between the two square numbers. This is the rule, which is the difference of squares. Call that because you're subtracting them from each other. And difference of squares always go into a double bracket. They start with the root of your first term. So the root of x squared is x. Then the second term is going to be whatever the root of your number is. So the root of 16 is 4. And you can either remember the fact that one's positive and one's negative, because that's the rule, or you can understand the fact that if we wanted to get a negative 16 product, the signs would have to be different. So the difference of squares is always starting with x in both brackets. The second term in both brackets is going to be the root, and then one's positive, one's negative. And that's only a one-mark answer, because you either recognise that rule or you don't. Question 13 is a 3D coordinate question. It's not that much more difficult than normal coordinates, apart from the fact it has an extra dimension, a third dimension. So the diagram shows a cuboid, that's a 3D rectangle, drawn on a 3D coordinate grid. This is the 3D coordinate grid. It's got an x-axis as normal, a y-axis as normal, and then it's got a z-axis, which means it's coming out towards you, or out towards the camera. So, the vertex, quite an important word, a vertex is a point or a corner. And if you see vertices, that means there's more than one. So, the vertex of N of the cuboid has the coordinates, so that's this point here, of 6, 2 and 4. Now, they're written as X and Y, just like normal coordinates, and then Z. So, it goes across 6. So if you picture this cuboid, you always start at the origin. Even though the corner looks like it's over here a bit, it's not. It's in exactly the same position as this corner. And to get to it, I had to go along the x axis 6. So it's 6 along, then it's 2 up. So 6 along, 2 up, and then it's 4 out towards us. All right? Now, they want to know what are the coordinates of the vertex R. So they want to know that. Now, picture this is the corner of a room, and this is your cuboid shoved in the corner. This part, this side of your cuboid, is flat against the side wall. That part is flat against the back wall. This part is flat against the floor. This is the corner that's poking out at you. So if I want to find what the coordinate points of that is, I start at zero. Now remember, this is the corner that's going to be flat against your wall. So you do not need to go across on the x-axis at all. So the x-coordinate is actually going to be zero. Then you need to work out how much do you go up. Well, we know that our cuboid from this corner, we know it's got a height of two. And this is a flat top. So each of these corners has a y value of two. So we've got a y value of 2. Now I need to know how far out my cuboid comes. And just like this one came out to 4, this also comes out to 4. So it's not any... Um, it doesn't go along the x-axis. It goes up 2 and it comes out 4. So there the coordinates of vertex are. Now part B wants to know what are the coordinates of the midpoint of the line segment Rn. So this was line Rn. They want to know what the midpoint is. 
Now I know the coordinates of point R are 0, 2, 4. And I know that the coordinate points of N are 6, 2, 4. So all I need to do to find the middle of any of these two points is add them together and divide by 2. So that will be 0 plus 6 divided by 2, which is 3. That's 2 plus 2 divided by 2, which equals 2. And that's 4 plus 4 divided by 2, which equals 4. So it's 3, 2, 4. Now question 1 was a one mark question, so you get a mark for getting it right. Uh, part B was a two mark question, and you get one mark for getting at least the 2 and the 4 right. So by realising it doesn't matter how far across it is, it's always going to be at the top of the cuboid, which is a y value of 2, and outwards, which is a z value of 4. So you get one mark for getting the 2 and the 4 correct, with any number there for x, but you get the second mark for getting the x correct. So that's one mark for those two, second mark for getting the 3 right. Question 14 is converting a recurring decimal and they want you to convert 0.25 recurring as a fraction in its simplest form. So first of all, what does 0.25 with a dot above the 5 actually mean? Well, it means 0.2 and then the 5s keep going on and on and on. And that's why this is difficult because I can't do an awful lot with this as long as I've got those 5s lingering on all the time. So I need to find a way of eliminating the 5 recurring. So let's call 0.25x, because that's our starting point. Now I can multiply that up in tens until I get somewhere where my 0.5 recurring is isolated. So if I multiply that by 10, I end up with 2.5 recurring. So I've managed to isolate a 5 recurring there. But because the 5 recurring isn't isolated here because the 2 is there, I can't use those two values. So let's go up another step. Let's see what 100x would be. So 100x would be 25.5 recurring. Now we can see that we've managed to isolate the 0.5 recurring on both of these because that only has 5 recurring after the decimal and so does that. So in order to get rid of them, I can subtract these from each other. So I can do 100x, take away 10x, would leave me with 90x. 25.5 recurring, take away 2.5 recurring, would leave me with 23, without any decimals. Then I can solve that for x by dividing the 90 away. That will leave me with x equals 23 over 90. Can I simplify that down any further? No, I can't, because there's nothing that goes into 23. That was a three mark question. You get one mark for actually showing that you know what 0.25 recurring is. You get one mark for the correct recurring decimals. So you get one mark for identifying the two points where your um, five recurring is isolated. And then you get the third mark for having your answer. Part B wants you to rationalize the denominator. So they just want you to get rid of the root. It's okay to keep it as a fraction, but we do not want a root there. So what I need to do is multiply the top and the bottom by root of 6. That ends up cancelling my roots out, so I end up with a fraction over 6. And up here I've got 12 root 6. Um, at this point I can simplify it down by doing the 12 divided by the 6, which would give me 2. And my root 6 is not affected by that division. So I end up with 2 root 6. 
It's a two mark question. You get one mark for multiplying top and bottom by root six, and you get the second mark for having two root six. They would also accept two root six over one according to the mark scheme.